remember that last week for the core class, we incorporated a medicine ball. And I'm going to be using that for a couple things again here today. Don't stress if you don't have one available. You can always just practice the form. Um, also, a basketball can work. If my kids are working out with me, that's what I usually have them use anyway so that it's not too heavy. But I'll show you what that looks like here. You remember? So I'm just using a four pound one. We'll be incorporating it with a couple of things today. And uh, we've got a really great video too on our YouTube channel that Amy put together about other things we can do with the medicine ball as well. So we're just gonna kind of slowly continue to introduce just like nice easy pieces of equipment in some of our classes just to provide more options. These are things that you can, hey Dakota, good to see you again. These are things that you can easily um, purchase online. They're pretty affordable. So um, just kind of adding different things, ways to mix it up in our workout toolbox here. I do have a set of dumbbells out, just light ones, because we are gonna do a couple things that uh, incorporate those. You can always uh, substitute canned goods or even like a water, uh, water or milk gallon, something to just create a little bit more resistance. So we're gonna do things like rows and like bicep curls with those. So, um, oh, and the third thing, I am gonna be incorporating a chair at some point too. So if you do easily have a chair handy, if not, just modify, find something that works. We're very casual here. But I, um, you can't see it right now, I've kind of got it pushed out to the side, but in our third circuit, I will kind of get that out to provide a couple options. So um, let's wait about one more minute, but just a friendly reminder to always consult with the physician if you're new to working out, new to fitness, if you um, have any health issues or concerns, please do get that confirmation first. Um, we will have kind of little phases of rest today because this is a longer class. So please do listen to your body. Um, I'm hoping that we've got time for a nice cool down once we're done with our last circuit as well. So um, always very important to warm up and to cool down so that we really make sure we're taking care of our bodies just like we would take care of or maintain a machine. Our bodies are like giant machines. So getting those healthy habits down at the beginning so that we can really keep our fitness journey going and keep our bodies safe over time. So let's go ahead and get right into our warm up here. Dang it. This ball is just handy off to the side. Okay, so go ahead and just stand up with me. Got my little cheat sheet down here, so I might be reaching down to look at it now and then. So we're gonna do each of these movements for 30 seconds. We've got about eight of them or so to go. So first one's gonna be marching. Let me get our timer set here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're just gonna start to lift those knees, kind of engage our core and get the arms swinging a little bit more here. And just kind of start to set the tone for your breath. We do want to make sure to have a nice, strong breath throughout our workout. We'll be doing things for time today. So this will allow you to take things at your own pace. Take it at a tempo that feels safe for you. Okay, go ahead and step those feet wide. Bring those arms up into a big Y. We're just going to reach down and tap those alternate toes. You can always bend your opposite leg along the way here to protect your hamstrings and low back. Make sure you're breathing. Let's go for one more tap on each side. Okay, go ahead and bring those feet back together. We're gonna do little light taps with our toes. I call these half jacks, or half jack uh, toe taps here. So just tapping each alternate toe, getting arms and legs moving. We're always engaging through our core. The more that we can kind of make that a habit now to activate our core no matter what we're doing. We're gonna help prevent injury over time. We're 
We're gonna maximize our strength in other areas. Okay, go ahead and just stand hip width apart. We're gonna do some arm circles. Just kind of nice medium sized circles here. And let's go ahead and circle the opposite way. So getting shoulders and arms nice and prepared. All right, bring those arms down. We're just gonna step side to side and do a little standing crunch. So bring your arms up by your ears. I'm gonna face my palms in towards me and make a fist. And we're just gonna step right, crunch, left, crunch, just like that. Breathing in and out here. Continuing to just slowly get everything nice and warm. We're gonna crunch it out for 10 more seconds. Let's go for three, two, one. Okay, bring those arms down here. So go ahead and bring the feet a little bit wider. We're gonna do a little bit of plie squatting with the arms. You can always point those toes slightly out. So heels a little bit wider than the shoulders. We're just gonna do a little bend, bring those arms up, bring them back in, and again. Breathing here. So this is a little bit of dynamic stretching here through legs and our thighs, stretching things out, but we're doing it in a way that incorporates movement. Go ahead and go for one more. All right. So next warm up, we're actually gonna come down to the ground or maybe to a mat if you've got one. So I'm gonna show the modification first for this warm up, which would be coming onto hands and knees we're gonna step one foot to the outside of the arm. We're gonna lift up, do a little twist. Bring your knee back and then go for the other side. So that rotation here. On the second half of the time interval, I'll show the full version, which would be plank to a high lunge with a twist. So we're, it's like a wide lunge because we're stepping really wide to the outside of the arms. Let's go for one more on each side. All right, nice. Bring it down, we're gonna pop back up to standing and just do a little bit of side lunging side to side. So we're gonna keep our feet wide the whole time. So your outer edges of the feet should be parallel to one another and to each other on the inside. And we're just going to do a little lunge on each side here. Think of shooting your hips back. Breathing in and out. We don't have to worry about going super fast. We're just coming into these movements here to activate everything thinking of waking the body up and preparing it. And let's hit one more on each side. Okay, we're ready for our last warm up and then we'll get into our first circuit. Just 30 seconds of jumping jacks. If you wanna do something more low impact, just take the variation of our little taps side to side, okay? And let's go. Nice, easy landing, low impact. Ten more seconds. For five, four, three, two, one. All right, hopefully you're nice and warm with me. We are going to get into our first circuit. So each circuit is going to have four movements. We'll do each one for a minute, we'll rest, 
we'll repeat it, then we'll move on to the next one. So revisiting the medicine ball that I talked about, I'm going to go ahead and get that in place. If you don't have a medicine ball, you could always just simply use a weight, or you could skip the weight and just practice form. So set yourself up on the bottom half for a squat. We're going to hold it here, and we're going to find our squat, overhead press, and we're going to do a little twist with a knee lift right to left. So squat, press, rotate, rotate. You can always skip the knee lift, which would just look like this, a little stabilization in the middle. You could also skip the overhead press. So feel free to break this down and simplify it by eliminating any movement here. Only 15 more seconds to go. Keep it strong, you guys got this. We're just gonna build slow and steady. This is the last rep. All right, nice. Moving on to our next movement here. We are gonna do standing wood chops. So 30 seconds in each direction. Create a little bit of a wider stance. We're going to start down to the left, through the middle, opposite corner, back to the heart. Just like that. So think of this coming from your core. Make sure we're breathing. This is the last one in this direction. And then we're gonna start, go ahead, down at the right. Keep it strong. Only 15 more seconds to go. Last rep. All right, great job. Okay, so this one is fun. It's more of an agility exercise here, a little bit more cardio related. We're gonna do a little shuffling to each side with a little toe tap. So go ahead, create a wide stance, bend your knees with me here a little bit, and we are gonna do one, two, three, touch. One, two, three, touch. You can always skip the toe touch. See if you can go for speed on that side to side movement here. But most importantly, staying balanced, even if that means your pace isn't as fast. Keep it moving, keep it low. More than halfway there. Make sure you're breathing. 15 more seconds to go. All right, guys, just one more to each side. Last one. Nice job, moving on. Okay, come on down to the mat with me here. You are gonna lie on one side or the other. We're gonna take those legs long out to the side here. We're gonna do a little side leg lifting with some pulsing. So think one, two, three. We're gonna lift up one, two, three. Little pulse, one, two, three. Bring it down, one, two, three. Again, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if it's too much, decrease the amount of pulses that you do. You could always just lift up and down. Go for 
one more. Good job. Go ahead and switch sides. You can just flip on over. I'm going to keep facing you and wind my legs around. Getting things in place. And let's go. Remember, it's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Try to keep your kneecap facing towards the front so that we're really working that outer glute and thigh. Also using the inner thigh for stabilization. Breathe. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Bring it down. All right, great job. Give yourself a little rest here, then we're gonna repeat that one more time. So if you've got water handy, you could always take a little sip right now. Remembering that we're going back to the squat to overhead press with our torso rotation with that little standing crunch. So if you've got a medicine ball or whatever you may be using as your prop, maybe you're not using anything, that's okay. Start to get things in place. Set yourself up for your squat on the bottom half, just a regular squat, shoulder width apart, toes straight ahead, if anything, just a little bit out if you need to. And let's go. Step by step. So we've got three different things going on here. We've got our squat, overhead press, and our rotation. Remember, skip the knee lift if you need to, which looks like this. Just do that little stabilization in the middle instead. Breathe. from your core. Less than 10 seconds. This is our last one. All right. Moving on to our shuffle toe touch. So remember, these are all about speed, but before you really go for that speed, make sure you've got the movement down and that your balance is okay. Either incorporate the toe touch or skip it by just shuffling from right to left. So getting that bend in the knees, getting low, one, two, three, shuffle. Little touch, shuffle.
15 more seconds. Almost there. Last time. All right, you guys rock. Let's bring it on down to the mat for our side leg lifts. Remember, it's all about the one, two, three, or skip the pulses and just simply lift up and down. Let's start with the first side. One, two, three. One, two, three, go down. Three, two, one. So especially if we start to get any cramping, especially if it feels unhealthy, Probably need to skip those pulses or modify, maybe take a little rest. One more on this side. Okay, let's flip it around. Gotta make sure we keep things even. Get yourself ready for the other side and let's go. So by doing our little one, two, threes and our pulsing, we're able to increase our resistance, have a little more of a toning effect, simply just using our own body. Three, two, one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Bring it down. Three, two, one. Last one. Great job, take that little rest. We are moving on to circuit number two. Okay, so for this next one, as we take our short little rest and continue to get set up moving forward, you will either have a medicine ball or a dumbbell handy. We're gonna do plank pull through, so something that you can either push or pull through I'm going to use the medicine ball, but you can also use a weight or any other object. We are also going to be using either the medicine ball or I'm going to actually use a throw pillow because I'm able to engage and squeeze a little bit more with that for a little bit of, um, we're going to use it between the inner thighs as we twist. So having that handy. And other than that, yeah, I think it's just the medicine ball or whatever you've got on hand. So let's go ahead and stay low. Get whatever item you have you use for a pull through handy. So you'll see what I mean by that. It can be in front of or behind you here. We're gonna come on to plank and I'm simply gonna pull this to one side. So see I'm doing it behind me here. You can also have it in front of you. And you can take this plank from the knees as well. So if I'm taking it from the knees, I just make sure that I keep my spine nice and flat still here so that I'm still working my core. I want to avoid like that sinking belly or kind of booty in the air. I want to think of everything in one line. You can always mix it up between modified and full plank. The important thing is to have proper form. Let your body strengthen at its own pace, knowing that if we're consistent, we'll get there to that variation we want. Less than 10. Last little pull through and bring it down. Good job. So keeping on the mat, flipping around here, I'm going to grab my little throw pillow here. So you can also use the medicine ball here between inner thighs. You're just really going to need to squeeze it because if it is heavier, it can drop through a little easier. Or in my case, my pants are a little more slippery. So using the pillow instead. So come on down to your spine. You're just going to squeeze it here. Arms out to T. And we're going to do some twisting side to side. So hover the knees in one direction. Go back to the middle and to the other direction. So it's core, but it's also inner thighs because we're squeezing. We're hugging 
coming in through lower abdominals and the rest of the core as well. So the most important part is to use control. So really, the slower even, the better from some perspective here to just really rev up that control, those core muscles. We've got 15 more seconds to go. Five more seconds. And done. Good job. So having, if you use the pillow or something, just bring it off to the side. And we are going to stay on the mat and come into our push-up to shoulder tap combo to work the chest, arms, and also the shoulders here. So you can take these modified or full. If you're still working on building up some more strength, pick one to go with. Either go with your shoulder taps or your push-ups. So you can always, again, break that down. So coming around here, I'm going to demo from my knees doing a modified version. So if we begin, I find my push-up and a shoulder tap. And just different ways that you can be creative and really tailor it to fit you. So maybe you need to modify on your push-up, but you could do a shoulder tap from a full plank. We could always go push-up, plank, shoulder tap, drop it down, push-up. So just different suggestions and options. Alternatively, we can also work on holding plank throughout the interval to kind of mix it up. All right, we're done with those for this round. We're going to go ahead and come up to standing and shift back to some lower body work by doing some split squats. So they're also kind of like lunge squats, I like to think of them. We are going to set ourselves up in a lunge stance. So we're up on that back toe here, and we're going to do 30 seconds on each side. So as I bend down here, it's like I'm just coming into a little lunge and pressing my weight back up. Make sure you use your breath. Inhale down, exhale up. Five more seconds. Last one on this side. Good, we're gonna go ahead and flip. I'm just gonna face the other way. And let's rep it out. If you're working on balance, you can always get your chair out handy and go ahead and hold on to it. Ten more seconds. Hug in through the ass, especially lower abdominals as we exhale, press up. One more. All right, give yourself a little rest before we repeat. You guys are doing great. Remembering that we're going back to the plank pull-throughs or push-throughs, depending on what you're using as a prop. If you don't have anything, again, just imaginary or focus on holding plank. So give yourself about 30 more seconds. Make sure you breathe, catch your breath here. As we shift forward, whatever prop we're using, we'll start to find that in place. Getting time clock ready and let's begin. Every time we tilt onto each arm, we're really 
emphasizing all the muscles along that side, especially down through arms, shoulders, and core. Squeezing in, dropping to the knees at any point. Nice and strong, we've got 15 seconds to go. stabilization. Breathe. It's all about control. Don't worry about speed. Halfway there. Keep breathing. Ten more seconds. Make sure we're squeezing and hugging in through inner thighs. Take one more. And done with those for the day. Nice. Moving on, we're back to our push-up shoulder tap combo. Remember, you can always have that option to just pick one instead of the compound uh, exercise combination here. Pick your variation of plank. Let's go ahead and start. Push-up, tap, tap. You can always take it from the knees. You can always do a combination. Maybe we push up from the knees and tap from full plank or vice versa. So I'm kind of just mixing it up here. We're more than halfway there. We've got it. Go for the quality over the quantity. It's okay if you have to take a little rest. We've got time for one more repetition. Okay, one more thing to go and then we'll be able to move on to our next circuit. Remember, it's split squats. So I demoed from the side last time. I'm just going to demo straight on this time. So set yourself up in your split stance, one leg in front of the other. You're up on your back toes. Got a healthy distance here. And let's go. Nice control. Good form. That front knee is either stacking over your ankle or no farther than the toes. Keep it strong. Exhale, big push up. One more on this side and then we'll switch. All right, switch it out. And whoop, let's begin. Breathing in and out. through. Nice 
and easy. One more. All right, we are done with split squats for the day. Give yourself a little rest while we move on to our next circuit here. So on this last circuit, we are going to just run through it one time so that we can get to our cool down here. But we'll make sure to work hard and really hit this one hard. This one is the one that's going to incorporate some dumbbells or other weighted items that you might have handy. So something that you can do a row with. We're going to do single arm rows. We're going to do some single bicep curls. And we're also going to be incorporating the medicine ball in the chair. So I guess I'll just call this last circuit like the works. We've got a lot going on. I'm going to grab my chair. So if you've got that handy habit set up, or even if you just have something to hold on to, we are going to start with the rows. So restarting our clock. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an eight pounder. Normally I'd probably go a little heavier than this, but my weights only go up to eight pounds that I have at home. So setting yourself up for that single arm row, you're going to have something to hold on to. Depending on your height, that might be the back of the chair or maybe even the seat. Just make sure your back is flat and your core is engaged. Let the arm hang straight down. We're going to exhale. Pull up. Little row. Think of squeezing the back of that right shoulder. So I can also hold a little higher. Again, as long as I'm protecting my back by engaging my core and keeping things flat here. Two more and then we'll switch it out. All right, other side, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip. Restarting our time, and let's go ahead and start. So I'm thinking of using my back muscles to lift my weight. And the arms are still incorporated here, but we don't want to be that to be the thing that's primarily lifting the weight. Think mind-muscle connection so that we're really squeezing and engaging through that back muscle. Let's go two more. All right. Moving on to our next thing, bicep curls. So we're going to kind of hit back and bicep really hard here. So since we've got the chair out, I'm going to give you the option if you want to sit in it and do your curls, you can, or you can also stand. A little more core work if we're standing here. So find what works. We're going to do single arm curls here to kind of work the core a little bit more. So arms hanging down heavy. You might have to sit on the edge of your seat if you're using your chair here. It's a little different than like a weight bench at the gym because the seat's not as narrow. So I know I mentioned single, but really these are, um, what I meant to say was alternating. If we were doing singles, we would just keep with the right arm and then switch to the left arm. So just one at a time, squeeze. We're more than halfway. Squeezing. Ten more seconds. Keep good posture, working the core, whether you're sitting or standing. And we're done. Okay, so finding the medicine ball again, or if you're just using weights, you could also hold a weight and use a weight instead. I'm just going to scoop my chair over a little bit for now. So I call these around the world with the arms. We're going to combine that with a squat or you're welcome
welcome to do a squat jump if you want to add a little bit of a power element. So set yourself up for your squat on the bottom half. Hold your ball here. We're going to go around the world, so engage arms, shoulders. Either a squat jump or a regular squat. Then go the other way, starting from the left. So we're alternating which way we circle our around the world every other time to make sure we stay in balance. And it's okay to skip the jump. You would just simply do a regular squat. More than halfway through. Closer to the end. Last one. All right, you guys brought. Great job. Okay. Revisiting our chair. This last exercise is going to be all about the lower body. So I'm simply having the chair in front of me for balance. We're combining side lunging with a little kickback hip extension. So we'll alternate each side. Bring your feet together. You've got the back of the chair for balance. We're going to step right, side lunge, shoot your hips way back, step together, little hip extension. So that looks like this. And then other leg. Little kick back. Ooh, make sure you don't kick your furniture. So every other leg. Halfway through. everything on down. So remembering our warm-ups, one of those movements we're going to use right off the bat for our cool down. So nice wide legs, we're going to do those plie squats again. So just be nice and easy on yourself. Give yourself a nice pat on the back. If you're working hard today, it doesn't matter if you got through every exercise perfect. Doesn't matter if you got through every time interval. What matters is that you participated, that you did your best. One more. All right, bring those arms out to a T here. We're gonna bring our right toes in and point our left toes out. We're just gonna face our left leg here and reach down towards the leg. Stretch your hamstring back out. Breathe. Go ahead and bring your spine parallel here. Right arm up. We're just going to exhale, lift your weight back up. Arms back out to T. Left toes in, right toes out. Swivel. And reach down. Breathing here. Lengthen the backs of those legs back out. And we can take right hand to right hip. Just pop that left arm up. Engage your core. Flat back. Exhale. Bring everything back up here. We're gonna take right leg crossed over the left, so squeeze through your inner thighs, and then we're gonna go ahead and just do a little fold. Make sure you're breathing in and out. If you're ever experiencing lightheadedness, do make sure you come on down to a seat and be nice and safe. So be careful, we're just gonna kinda ragdoll our way back up, and then uncross, 
other side, squeezing our thighs together and reaching over. And this would possibly be a good one to incorporate yoga blocks or anything that elevates the ground here to hold on to for stability if we're not quite folded farther over. All right, go ahead and uncross. We're gonna lift back up. I'm gonna come over to my mat here. Just do a little swan dive. Just reach straight up. Lengthen your side bodies out. Exhale, little forward bend. Let's go ahead and step left toes back. Drop that back knee. So just a little low lunge here. We're gonna do just some gentle twisting. So just take a little look over your right shoulder. Take a breath. We're gonna unwind and then lift the right arm, take a twist. And if it feels okay for your right shoulder, take your right palm, flip it away from you and then bend at the elbow. Open those shoulders back up. Unwind our arm, bring things down. So tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, step on back up here. Let's go ahead and reverse one dive. We're gonna reach back up. Stretch, exhale back down, we'll move into the other side. So right toe stepping back, drop the back knee, stretch those hips back out here. Let's do our little twisting. So look around your left shoulder and unwind your gaze back to the front. Keep your right arm down, lift your left arm up. If it feels okay for your shoulder, we're gonna flip that left palm facing away and then bending at the elbow, open the shoulders back up. All right, unwinding, bring it on down here. Tuck the back toe, lift the back knee. Let's go ahead and just step it back up here. We're just gonna ragdoll our way back up to standing. So that's all we've got today. Hopefully you feel nice and cool down. Again, this will be available for later viewing, so if you Feel inspired, feel free to share it with a friend, and hopefully I'll see you next time. We've got a Relax and Restore tomorrow, which will be a great recovery and cool down opportunity if you uh, participated with us today. See you next time.